Hello and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. My name is John Pollock and today John Ramdi and Robin Black and myself are running through Saturday night's Bellator 106 card which featured the crowning of a new lightweight and featherweight champion. Long Beach, California was the site of Bellator 106 and the anticipated rematch two years in the making between Michael Chandler and Eddie Alvarez. The fight was easily the best fight on the main card with Alvarez squeaking by with a split decision victory over Chandler to regain the Bellator lightweight crown and sets up the inevitable rubber match which could be earmarked for pay-per-view in early 2014. Emmanuel Newton was determined on Saturday to prove that his knockout victory over Mohamed King Mola Wall earlier this year was anything but a fluke, and he proved just that with a unanimous decision victory over Mo. Newton showed good takedown defense throughout the fight and let his hands go on a very tired Lawal later in the bout to get the unanimous decision victory and set up a fight with light heavyweight champion Attila Bay next year. And Daniel Strauss became the new Bellator featherweight champion by outworking Pat Curran over the course of five rounds, including a 10-8 round in the third where he took an illegal knee from Curran and ends the year-and-a-half title reign of Curran on top of the Bellator featherweight landscape. And we're here with John Ramdeen and Robin Black, and we are chatting about Bellator 106 from Saturday night, a card that was a very important one for Bellator, because I think that this was an event where maybe a lot of people that have not sampled Bellator in the past were going to check this out. This was probably their biggest card they've ever presented. Uh, did they get a passing grade on Saturday? Of Mr. course. Randy? Yes, of course they did. Eddie Alvarez and Michael Chandler absolutely delivering. I said the card. Did the card well, get a passing grade? It did, because grade? number one, you always look at the main event, and the main event is put together for people to say, they walk away from the fight saying, man, what a spectacular showing. We However, if I went out Saturday night and I PVR'd this thing for three hours yeah, and maybe on. threw on an extra 30 minutes, I missed the main event. Yeah, I know. This that, show went three hours and 45 minutes, that, and that's asking a lot of people who may not have been home on Saturday night to, to watch this. They come home, and they missed the last three rounds. Yeah, and that's the danger of having three title fights, three 25-minute bouts. Uh, I think Bellator has got to rethink a couple of things, but they don't have to rethink whether or not to keep Eddie Alvarez. Do whatever you have to do to make sure this guy stays on your roster. Of course, we're going to see the third fight between Michael Chandler and Eddie Alvarez, and why wouldn't we? These who, guys... Who won that fight, Robin? I, I had Alvar I had it tied up going into the fifth round, but, you know, sometimes you watch fights really analytically. Okay, this guy owned these two minutes. These takedowns mattered. He did this. Other times you're screaming at your TV set, and it's really hard to, to follow. For my money, the guy who was going to win the fifth round was going to win the fight. I thought that Chandler won three rounds, but I think that second round, there was a combination that Alvarez landed right at the end of that round that rocked Chandler and all three judges at cage side who saw that all gave that second round to Alvarez so I think that that second round was really key in this mm -hmm. fight and I don't think anyone's screaming robbery I think that's insane but I think that now we get the third fight between these two and it's a really weird situation right now if the contract is as has been reported that Alvarez win or lose he's then a free agent after that third fight yeah it's very strange but what's awesome to think about is how Michael Chandler is going to improve since that loss to Eddie yeah. Alvarez. We've seen guys say, you know, they're absolutely dominant, but it's not until they suffer the first loss to say, oh, I didn't even realize that I have a next level. And I think we're going to get to see that from Michael Chandler, which makes the, the, the rubber match even more intriguing. There's a few reasons why. That, that's an interesting one. How does Chandler handle a loss? And he seems to be the kind of guy who will, you know, grow from it. But for a lot of these guys, they don't believe they'll ever lose. I mean, Diego Sanchez was like 15 and 0 or 600 and 0. And you were, they were talking to him and he was still like, I will never lose. Now, of course, he's a little crazy, but these guys start to believe that it is an impossibility that they'll lose. Chandler just found out that it is actually possible for him to give everything he has, want it more than the other guy, drive down to the bitter end and still lose. And that is a big learning moment for any guy who believes they can do anything and suddenly you can't do quite anything. You have to imagine though, for Michael Chandler, this guy's gone through the, the wrestling system. There's nobody that's undefeated in wrestling. So, you know, I, losing is just a part of the game. And of course, none of these guys want to lose. They always try to get win as many matches as humanly possible, but it's inevitable. I mean, even Alexander Carolyn still lost a match and he's considered to be one of the greatest of all time. So I think Michael Chandler, he's so coachable 
unreachable. I think he'll be able to rebound. And I think just again, the, the idea of that third fight is just so thrilling, especially for fans that may be new to the Bellator organization. It's like, well, I've never heard of these guys. And then what you get to see from the main event will definitely have you coming back. Unlikely we will see a third fight between King Mo Lawal and Emmanuel Newton. Uh, this was a fight to me. We questioned it at the time. Why do we have an interim title here? Then in the last week, we hear Attila Vey is training to be ready on standby to fight for his own title, essentially. Yeah. It, it just made no sense to me. This was a tough loss for, for Lawal. He just got beat over the course of these, these five rounds. I gave him one and five, but he just looked extremely tired at, at the end of this fight through, throughout the last half of this fight. We have say. to imagine like the reason why everything is so confusing about this King Mo situation is because Bellator and Viacom kind of put all their eggs in one basket, so to speak. They're hyping this guy up before he really made some sort of an impact in the Bellator organization. And they broke like the first rule of mixed martial arts. Anything can happen, and it normally does happen. Eddie Alvarez got choked out by Michael Chandler. Gabriel Gonzaga head kicked Mirko Krokop. Matt Serra knocked out George St. Pierre. These guys should learn from the history of mixed martial arts, and they haven't done so. Instead, what did they manufacture this interim title fight and King Mo still doesn't win the fight. Is that because King Mo stinks? No, it's because Emmanuel Newton is very, very underrated and they should understand that and that's why you just put in uh, Emmanuel Newton versus Attila Vey, get that out of the get that out of the way, and you put King Mo in there to showcase some skills, put him in there, get a couple of victories, have him look spectacular, but for some reason they didn't do that. Yeah, and, and King Mo is a great talent. He's just a candle that's burning at both ends and in the middle. He's trying to be a wrestler and he's trying to come up with funny and smart things to say and a heel turn and a crown and all these millions and of things. And not talking to yeah. Frank Shamrock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who I want who, to be the permanent backstage <laughs> interviewer. He nah, was man, awesome. that wasn't good. But Frank did not do a great I job. I want then. that on my TV every single Bellator <laughs> show. For the future, looking into 2014, should they have they learned their lesson here? Is pay-per-view something that they are not ready for at this stage? Or do they go here with Chandler Alvarez and, and at least test the waters and see if the, anyone's biting? I, I say no. I think they're going to do it. They're going to have a pay-per-view, but it doesn't make sense. Right now, just focus on developing their talent. And maybe in the future, the distant future, have pay-per-views. Yeah, but gonna, now's not the time. They're going to learn the hard way, I think. Tito Ortiz, I think he's coming to pay-per-view in 2014. Let us know what you thought of Bellator 106. But right now, we have more coming at you with more Fight News Now Extra.